Hey everybody, welcome and thanks for checking out this video. Today I'm going to tell you about how to do a watercolor grid portrait. As per usual, with all of your grid portraits, you're going to start by putting a 1 inch grid on your paper, depending on what size grid you're using. I'm doing a 1 inch grid on a 9 by 12 paper. So I've also got a, one, or a 9 by 12 grid put on my image as well. And you can do this, I did this in Photoshop, but there are a lot of apps you can get even just on your phone where you can choose your grid size and what you want to do and put it on your paper. After you get your initial contour drawn on your paper, you're going to go through and erase your grid lines. I like to keep my grid lines on my faces just because until I'm actually painting them and that way I can see where the shadows are more distinct and where I need to kind of blend those in. So I've got my grid erased now and I'm going in on my palette and putting in, I like to put in a lot of water in my different washes. That way I know I've always got plenty. And I also go ahead and drop some water in on my actual paints on there so that uh, they'll be ready to go, ready to mix. I like this palette because the pan where I put my washes in is slanted and so that way you can kind of see how the, the colors run down to the bottom. It makes it easier to mix um, a lighter wash up at the top if you need. And, you know, I've got just kind of my standard colors in here. So now I'm going through and kind of doing just base colors on large swaths of area here. Getting some base skin tone there, getting my base color for my masks and our clothing on here. You want to make sure anytime you're laying your base that you keep in mind where there are highlights in your image because with watercolor, unless you go back in with like a gel pen or a paint pen, you won't be able to put those highlights back in. So keep that in mind. And once I get my base color in, I'm going in and kind of looking at where my shadows are and starting to build those shadow layers with my skin tones here you know I've got a base brown over here that I mean I've got a couple different browns but then you can also kind of see where you've got like if a shadow is more red you can go in and add more red if it needs more blue you go in and add more blue you know you're not just working in browns now hair is pretty tricky on a watercolor I went in there and laid in some highlights on the middle figure's hair we'll get back to that in a minute so now we're working on some other skin tone over here, diving into the face. Kind of start with a base layer, make sure you leave your highlights in there. Going in for the eyes, eyes are complex and there are a lot of different layers to them. All the figures in this image have pretty dark eyes, so I went in with a lot of different layers of color first. Started with some blues and some browns before I laid in my, my final kind of darker shades. Now we're going in, once again, putting in some mid-tones. Here we are don't, diving into some hair again. All right, so, well, not quite. I decided I needed to paint the background in before I started on the hair. And then I got distracted by this face. You kind of jump all over the place when you're doing watercolors because you keep got to wait for things to dry. Here on the eyes again, you saw I put in some blue, put in some gray. Now I'm putting in some darker brown highlights, um, adding a lot of different layers to this. One of the tricky parts with eyes as well is that you want to leave the whites of the eyes white because you're like, those are the whites. But you can't, because the whites of the eyes aren't white. They do have shadows on them. And that's the trick to making something look realistic, is putting in what you actually see, rather than what you want it to be. You can see on this eye in particular, I built up lots and lots of different layers. I built it up with reds, with browns, put some blues in there. And now I'm going in for the other eye here, getting distracted and moving around, making sure I leave those highlights on the nose there. There are a couple highlights on the forehead you can't quite see yet. But the eyes just take up a lot of building and especially with watercolor because when you lay it on there it will look darker for a little bit until it dries and it will dry lighter so now I'm going back in and putting even get one for those smaller details and all of this layering in some more shadow it's a really you got to be patient with it you got to wait for stuff to dry but the nice thing with 
the watercolors is that you can always just sort of reactivate what's on there to blend it further. If you use sort of a scrubbing motion with your brush, you can reactivate the paint. You won't be able to erase it, but you can reactivate it and add more, change the color a little bit. Going in for hair there for a minute. I painted in my highlights first. You gotta leave those highlights. And then I went in with my different shadows and mid-tones. There's a little close-up on the eyes there. You can see I've still got some work to do on this hair, but I've got a bunch of different colors in there. I'm starting to work on the hair over on the figure on the right. Layering in some more skin tones. Once again, you can always, with a scrubbing motion, kind of reactivate the paint on there and add more layers. There's just a lot of building up of layers to finally get the, uh, the product you want at the end. But it's really, it's really interesting because you I feel like watercolor, it's unlike other paints, like with acrylic, you know, once something's dry, you can't rework it, you know, you've just got to mix a new paint and go over it, but with watercolor, you've had this kind of longer process of, of building up color until you get the, the one that you want. Now I'm going to add some detail in the mask here, we're trying out the hair again. So I started with some brown, I got some darker tones I'm putting in there. Working on the headband. Hair is just tricky with watercolor, but like anything, you know, if you really want to make it look realistic, go in, spend a lot of time on it. Don't just kind of swatch in a bunch of different colors, but actually go in and try it. Did I just smash in some colors here? Yeah, because I was kind of, I didn't want to spend too much time on this painting. I wanted to go ahead and get it done. So now I'm going in here, maybe adding some final little details, feeling sort of okay about the product. It's kind of a little bummed with the figure on the right's eyes, but whatever. You live, you learn. Even if you even if you make mistakes, even if your final product doesn't look the way you want it to, you always learn something in your in your painting. Uh, you'll always learn more about the process. You'll get more skilled with your brushwork, with your blending. So like, don't despair even if something doesn't turn out the way you want it to. It's always worth trying and you'll learn every time. Thanks again for watching this video. Hope that was helpful. Have a great day.